It says, create an idea map for the topic below. Use the example above to assist your efforts with selecting the brainstormed idea. So here's your topic. Think of a public event you have attended recently, such as a concert or film showing. Create an idea map for one paragraph, which describes the event to a friend. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to help you out, is I'm going to um, open a Microsoft Word document. I want task number four in a Microsoft Word document. The reason I want it in a Microsoft Word document is because you being able to generate and create an idea map inside of um, an email message is extremely difficult. So we're gonna type it in a Microsoft Word document or a rich text or a notepad, whatever document you've got to be able to type it in, that will work. It doesn't have to be Microsoft Word, um, whatever. If you've got notepad on your computer, that's gonna work. So what I want to do is for one, let me type out what my topic is so I can remember. All right, so I have the topic here. It says, think of a public event you have attended recently, such as a concert or film showing. Create an idea map for one paragraph, which describes the event to a friend. All right, so what I'm gonna do is first, we can't create an idea map without having, uh, first using uh, one of the brain, excuse me, one of the generating ideas technique. So I like brainstorming. Um, because I don't necessarily need a topic. The topic's already given to me, so I'm gonna brainstorm. Um, I do know that there was a concert that I recently attended, so I'm going to actually brainstorm about that. So let me type out a few uh, brainstormed ideas, give me just a minute, and then we will create our idea map from that. All right, I've created a lot of ideas. I limited myself to five minutes while creating my ideas. If you can't tell, this is actually a George Strait concert that I recently went to at the beginning of the year. And so I just very briefly, probably actually less than five minutes, I was able to knock that out. I basically just started, this is me describing this event to a friend. So I'm kind of going and using just in the back of my head, I'm thinking of, you know, where do we start? What do we do? Where do we go? Um, what led up to the event, what happened during the event, and then afterward. So after brainstorming and reevaluating the writing task, I need to be sure that I'm only addressing what the writing task asked of me. So what does the topic ask of me? I need to create an idea map for one paragraph which describes the event to a person. So I'm actually describing the concert. So I don't necessarily need all the ideas that I put in there, and that's a ton of ideas. Um, it's a lot of detail that will be in that one paragraph. So I'm not writing a five paragraph essay. You're not writing a five paragraph essay for me. You're not even writing one paragraph for me today. So I'm gonna highlight that because that keeps it in the back of my head and I'm describing it, the event to a friend. This just puts it in my face and I know kind of what's going on. So first, I'm gonna get rid of some of these ideas. I don't need this. Yeah, I think I need to be able to describe, you know, going uh, to OKC from Stephenville. Um, however, you know, this checking into the hotel, that's really not an idea that's relevant to what happened at the concert. Neither is walking around downtown OKC or eating dinner before. Um, I hear it's once my ideas kind of get to that point, it starts walking around the concert, watching Martina McBride, and that's the ones after that. Will I use all of that information as I create my idea map? Probably not. However, it gives me a lot of detail that I can easily refer to to be able to create my idea map and then go back from that and be able to uh, create a, and describe this event if I were writing a paragraph. So let me go down here. I think I'm ready to go ahead and start writing my idea map. First, the main idea of my paragraph will need to describe the whole purpose of my paragraph. This is called a topic sentence. However, since we're only creating an idea map, I only need a small sentence to express my main idea. So let's do that first. First, I need to create my main idea. I'm gonna put it in brackets because it helps me kind of keep in track of what's going on. This is me personally. So let me create my main idea because uh, my main idea is kind of all of these ideas pulled together because it's about the concert. It's about me describing this event to a concert. So if a friend were reading this, uh, my topic sentence might look like this. It's a very brief sentence. It tells exactly what happened, where I went, and you know who we saw in concert. 
So if my friend read this topic sentence with my main idea in that topic sentence as I'm creating my idea map, if they read that, they may not even have to read anything else to know exactly what happened. However, when you describe, when you're creating an idea map or even writing, when you describe, you're giving more detail. So let me start at this point. Um, I want to be able to give supporting details. Now your supporting details are part of your idea map. Um, this helps to describe the event to a friend. Finally, I want to briefly show you what my conclusion sentence will look like because obviously when you are writing any paragraph, you have your topic sentence, which we just created. You'll have your supporting details and then at the bottom you'll have your conclusion. If I put all this information in my idea map, I know that I'm not going to forget anything when it comes time to actually creating my first draft. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to push this in. Let's see. So I'm just going to label this. Uh, I welcome you to do so because at this point it helps. It helps me to know which pieces are what. So my first uh, supporting detail is trip from Stephenville to OKC. Just small information because this is not my paragraph. This is basically some information. All right. You can see that I'm going in order. Why do you think that I'm actually going in order as I'm describing this event to a friend? Mainly, I want to make sure that I'm telling this in a time sequence. If I started from the very end to tell my friend what happened at my, this concert, that probably wouldn't make a, a lot of sense. Uh, my friend would be left out of how I got there, how the concert was. They would just know that I left. Um, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So you go in a time order. It's like first this happened, second this happened, third, fourth, and so on. So as I'm creating my supporting details for my one paragraph for my idea map, you can see I'm going in order. Let's finish this off. All right. I've already created some of this. And I think I've got four supporting details in here. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I don't want to draw it out too much. So here I go into my conclusion sentence. A conclusion sentence is basically a summary of everything that occurred. So we finished the wonderful concert and went back to the hotel. So overall, which is a transition word, we finished the wonderful concert and went back to the hotel. If I were actually writing this into a paragraph, this idea map into a paragraph, I would not have to stray far to be able to actually be able to create the sentence. As you can see, that's my idea map. So that was not hard at all. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to move that down so I can say task number four so I can remember. Let me save as. All right. I'm just going to save this because I need to save it because this is my assignment or you, the student, this will be your assignment to me. So I'm going to exit out. Because the messages inside of Blackboard are not allowing me to do an attachment, if you would please send me your attachment in your Ranger College email and send it to my email or whatever email that you may have, but I want you to send the attachment to H Ortiz, O R T I Z, at rangercollege.edu. And if you will send that to that email, that would work well. Um, for some reason, I cannot get the uh, uh, messages to allow an attachment. All right, so the last activity for this learning module is to write an, in an ongoing journal. Be sure to get back to the learning module and scroll down to where we have here the Summer One Writing Journal. Click on the blue title and you'll be automatically routed to the online journal. The goal of this online journal is to provide evidence of how you are changing your writing skills as you progress through this class. So you are responsible to write two paragraphs reflecting your thoughts, feelings, expressions, or criticism of this week's writing tasks and focusing on generating ideas and creating an idea map. I'm always welcome and I'm always open to criticism and how to make my um, instructional strategies better. So please be open with me. Um, my suggestion is because this is a reflection of your writing skill and a reflection of your activity this week. 
uh, please make sure it's in first person. Use I, me, or my. Um, do not use second person you because it's almost as though you're bossing me around. And so um, what you'll do is you will see here that I've already created a journal, so you're welcome to read that. Um, it is some interesting information. But what you'll do is make sure you click on Create Journal Entry. All right. And so uh, what you need to do is basically just type your name. You can type Journal Entry and then your name. And this is where you will write your two paragraphs. Uh, this is your reflection of, again, your ideas, thoughts, expressions, feelings in regard to what you've learned this week. Two full paragraphs. You're able to earn up to 25 points for this task, but of course it's reflective of how well you've done. Do not forget that you need to spell check. Click on the ABC with the check button. Don't turn it in. Don't submit it because you cannot edit your journal entry once that you've submitted it and posted it. All right, so please check your spelling and the computer does it for you. All right, so once you've typed um, whatever you've typed here, what you'll do is you'll post entry. Okay, when you post, it will post exactly like this. All right, it basically looks like a piece of paper, like a journal entry. Uh, you and I are able to see this. Uh, no one else in the class is able to be able to read this information, so this is strictly just between you and I. All of these assignments, they do have due dates stipulated on these assignments. Um, so my suggestion is do not wait to the last minute. If you are waiting to the last minute and you let me know you can't even get into Blackboard, um, I'm sorry, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, you are a college student, you understand taking an online class has certain expectations. And so waiting until the last minute is not at all advisable. You're pretty much limiting yourself and you're likely not to be able to accumulate all the points that you had thought that you would. Um, I will let you know that I will actually be out of the country um, on June 1st to June 6th. However, I will be responding to emails and Blackboard as well as at my H or T's at rangercollege.edu email. Um, just please uh, get in touch with me if you have any questions or any concerns. I will not have my phone on me when I'm out of the country, uh, so there's no use in trying to call or text. Uh, email is likely going to be the only way that I'll be able to respond. Um, I do appreciate you being in this course this summer. And I look forward to uh, us evaluating our instruction for next week. Thank you and have a great week.